Hey, it's Scott from FamilyWheels.ca and that is the 2019 Jaguar XFS, a 380 horsepower British designed luxury mid-size sedan. And let me tell you, if you are looking for a car that gathers attention and turns heads wherever you go, this is an excellent choice. People have been asking me over the week that I've been driving it all about it, just stopping and commenting on it. And I think a lot of it has to do with the color. This one is called Rosello Red, but let's be honest, it's kind of purple, right? And I think if you would have asked me if I would ever own a purple car, the answer would be somewhere along the lines of not on your life. But this thing, I have to admit, it looks stinking good. And I think a part of it has to do with these black 20 inch rims and the S body kit and some of the black chrome on it and stuff. It's a good looking car. So we've established that yes, Jaguar have made a beautiful vehicle here, but beauty is only skin deep, right? How does this thing work when you get the kids and the gear in it and you throw all your everyday tasks? What is it like then? Well, let's go find out. So the XF is Jag's mid-size luxury sedan. It sits between the compact XE and the larger XJ. This model that we're in is actually the XFS, which is the most performance-oriented of all of the trims available. It includes a three liter supercharged V6 that makes that 380 horsepower and 332 pound feet of torque. It's coupled with an eight speed automatic transmission and all wheel drive. Of course, it's also a Jaguar, so it also feels luxurious and sophisticated. The fit and finish throughout are as you'd expect from a $75,000 car. The base model of the XF comes in at just over 59,000 Canadian, and this guy, the XFS, starts at that 75,000 amount I mentioned, and as tested with all the bells and whistles, this model would be out the door with taxes and fees at 87,350 Canadian. Now, back to that fit and finish I was mentioning. Take a look throughout the cockpit here. I love this gray wood inlay, and the shifter for the transmission is awesome. It feels techy and special and how it raises and lowers when you turn the car on and off. The sunroof is bigger than others, so I appreciate appreciate that and all the options you'd expect are here including all the driver's assist stuff like lane keeping assist and blind spot monitoring self parking features which all work really well and were easy to use and a very good looking infotainment system which we'll talk about more in a second but there are some things here that I don't love for example the XF has an engine start stop feature uh, to improve economy if you're in traffic or at stoplights this is a great idea when you're not moving just kill the engine right but I actually found it to be just finicky like I'd be at a stoplight with the engine dead and then it would just start randomly without me lifting my foot off the brake pedal like maybe I lifted pressure a little bit but either way it's just too finicky and I just don't feel like it should be that way it should just engage and disengage when it's supposed to right Another thing that I don't love is how the seat heaters work. Heated and vented options here in the S, but to get to them, it's just too many steps. You first need to hit the seats button in the center console, which then brings up the seat temperature menu on the screen, which you then turn on and select your heating or venting and its level. Doable, yes, but unnecessarily tedious, also yes. Just give me nice and easy buttons here in the console. The climate control system is the same. If you want to turn the temperature up, you have to hit this little up arrow over and over and over and over and over, as opposed to just holding it down or spinning a wheel to get to maximum temperature. Same goes for the fan. You have to hit the button a whole bunch of times. Just feels like a little bit of a pain and not as easy as it should be. Well, let's move on to the infotainment system because that's kind of in the same ballpark. The screen is excellent. It just has a higher end look and feel to it than most cars. 
great colors and design, the touchscreen response is excellent, and Bluetooth connectivity never failed. But the navigation here is also just a bit onerous, with lots of functions requiring the use of multiple buttons and screens to finally get what you want. I do get that this is a thing in cars nowadays, as we incorporate more and more tech, automakers need to find ways to operate it all, and of course that means more buttons and menus and steps and all that. But I think it also creates an opportunity for great design to shine through, and we're starting to see examples of it in certain places. This though would frustrate me if I had to use it all the time. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are here, but Jaguar also wants you to download their own app. It's called In Control, and it syncs a bunch of stuff from your phone to the screen. It works well, yeah, but it's another step that I just don't see the need for. The steering wheel controls are good though, and they do make everything a bit easier, but there are still some issues here too. Like if you use the buttons to access any of the menus in the gauge cluster, you have to exit out of the menu that you're in to do something like skip a song. I just think it all could have been done a little better. But again, I'm a stickler for stuff like this. And really, let's be honest, if you're actually considering buying a Jaguar, I suspect that details like this probably aren't your main concern. You're probably after things like a comfortable ride, which this car has in spades, build quality, again, which is no problem, and certain amounts of prestige, which, yes, Jaguar has. And when you get in the XF, it feels like a $100,000 car. The leather is firm and consistent. The fit and finish on the inlays and the dash and console is all excellent. And there's other little details and stuff that just add to the vibe. Like, for example, one of the things I kept noticing is the rear view mirror. Like, how often do you get into a car and notice the rear view mirror? But in this car, I did. I like how its bezel is so small. It just looks cleaner and better, like it's an attention to detail thing. And these gray wood inserts I mentioned, and the logos embossed in the seats, it's like Jag knows who they are and who's going to be driving these cars, and they don't feel the need to show off with bright colored stitching or logos, which feels a bit classier than what you find in other sports sedans. The front seats are both 18-way power adjustable, and you also get a power adjustable steering wheel, so getting comfortable is no problem at all. The interior feels big and roomy, lots of legroom and headroom make it feel very first class. Same in the back, more spacious than I was expecting, and the trunk is huge, easily tackling our standardized trunk test of a stroller, backpack, diaper bag, two bags of groceries, and a football with lots of room to spare. Other little details make the experience too. We get seat heaters for our passengers in the back, rear map lights, a 12 volt outlet in the trunk, along with power opening and closing lid, and look how easy they make it to install a car seat with the latch system. Just remove a couple of little covers here and you get direct access, so no fishing around between the seat and seat back. I just snap these off and keep them either in the glove box or the side pockets in the rear doors. Super easy and convenient. In our rear facing car seat test, we scored 32 inches from the back of the front passenger seat to the glove box, which is great. And in our decibel test, the Jag measured 62 decibels at 100 kilometers an hour, but that's in the rain, so a little bit louder than normal. Also really happy with these results. Now let's get down to the real important stuff here, how the car drives. And to answer your question, yes, it's fast. <laughs> like zero to 60 in 5.3 seconds fast. 380 ponies will give you that, but somehow it doesn't feel quite as fast as it should. And it's not the speed. You mash the pedal and watch the dash, and you'll see you're breaking laws at an alarming rate. It has to do with the car's demeanor. Like somehow it's almost too refined. It has drive settings for things like eco, snow and ice, and dynamic, which is supposed to make it feel sportier, and the transmission has a sport mode too, but even with these things selected, the car still feels like it cares more about looking good and keeping its passengers comfy than it does giving them a thrill. It has paddle shifters, but when it's in sport mode, it shifts aggressively enough on its own, but there's something about the overall ride that just feels somehow subdued. But hey, if you have kids asleep in the back, maybe that's a good thing. So is the Jaguar XFS the right car for you and your growing family? Well, it certainly has its upsides. 
There's plenty of space throughout for both passengers and gear. All wheel drive will get you almost anywhere you need to go and help keep your family safe if conditions get bad. And it'll also make everyone around you think you got a bonus at work. Every time you get into drive it, you'll probably feel like that too. And of course, it's certainly no slouch. And let's be honest, it looks darn good. But there are also some minuses here. The finicky tech gets on my nerves, but yeah, you might get used to it after a while. And the car can get pretty thirsty. Jaguar say to expect 10.4 liters for 100 kilometers in this model, the S, but we actually found ourselves getting more like 12.5 liters for 100 kilometers combined city and highway over a week of driving. That works out to 18.8 US miles per gallon. Not terrible, but also not great. And remember, there is a supercharged V6 under the hood. So what's the bottom line? Well, I guess if you want the finer things in life and you're willing to pay for them, the Jaguar XFS is a great choice. Plus, you can count me as one of the many people who will turn their heads as you pass by. For FamilyWheels.ca, I'm Scott.